Could a fungus solve our problem with plastic trash? Scientists believe that they've made a promising breakthrough. There is a type of plastic that has been a real problem. Polypropylene is in packaging and cling wrap and coat hangers and furniture. In fact, it makes up almost 30% of the world's plastic waste. Only 1% of it is recycled. Enter two new strains of fungi. Researchers at the University of Sydney said that the fungi managed to eat 21% of the plastic it was given in just 30 days. With more is University of Sydney's Professor Ali Abbas. Professor Abbas, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Good evening. Um, I, I know that the fungi usually likes wood, so how do you get it to develop a taste for saran wrap? We, we, we don't do that. It actually does that. Fungi, or fungi as I call them in Australia, they are very versatile. They can grow on many, many different substrates and materials, and not just woody materials, but we've been uh, learning and, and seeing them grow on all sorts of synthetic materials that uh, we have uh, created and made, like plastics. That's incredible. How did you discover that this, this fungi could be applied this way? It's been a thought really in, in my mind for many, many years. I've always been passionate about mushrooms. I, I'm a mushroom forager myself since I was a child, but uh, uh, I've been watching fun fungi grow on these materials and you know, knowing that they are very resilient, very versatile. I've thought always, uh, you know, with my research work in circular economy and waste, that we can utilize these microorganisms to uh, our advantage to uh, uh, degrade these plastic waste materials. Help us put it into perspective. When you saw the result of 21% of this plastic eaten by the fungi in 30 days, what did you think? I thought it was quite remarkable. We've been hearing a lot um, in, uh, in, the, in the media and also in other research that plastic takes not just decades, but centuries to degrade. You know, it's kind of the forever material sometimes called. But um, that kind of uh, ra rapid rate by the fungi kind of uh, told, told us some uh, interesting information that we can actually uh, degrade plastics much, much faster than those rates uh, reported earlier. Yeah, the plastic did uh, have to be treated with UV or heat first, but but could this make a major dent in these difficult plastics that pollute our world? I think it, it can, we think it can, and uh, this combination of the um, photo oxidation or the UV and uh, thermal treatments with the biological process uh, is creating an, quite an amplification in the degradation process. It's helping out a lot, this combination, and we think we can scale that up to make it a very versatile process for uh, degrading the tons and tons of plastics out there. And, and we know PFAS, uh, so-called forever chemicals linked with cancer, it, it is such a major problem. It is just now entering our public yes. consciousness, and they are in almost, it seems like they're in everything. They're in nonstick mm -hmm. pans, so many consumer products. Is there hope that fungi could one day break down PFAS? It is actually already being reported, some of the research, not by our group, but elsewhere, that the yes, fungi can be employed to break down all sorts of materials, including PFAS chemicals. And this is also becoming a, uh, an issue, an emerging contamination issue in Australia too. Yeah, okay, I mean, last, very last question, 10 seconds. It sounds like a no-brainer. Is there any downside to using this fungi to break down plastic? We've got to scale it up at the moment, and we're uh, kind of keen to understand how we can do that very successfully, and, and that's the biggest challenge in front of us at the moment. Okay, Professor Ali Abbas, I, I appreciate your work and your time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.